How much do we trust anonymous GM reporting? Plus, Steph Curry says he wants to stay in the Bay forever. Can players do that anymore? And embarrassing moments for owners. Two-factor authentication people right now on the Locked On NBA podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for joining another episode of the Locked On NBA podcast. Still coming to you five days a week here in the Locked On Podcast Network on Wednesdays. I am the Jake Madison joke stealer, John Corrales. You can find me at John underscore Corrales on Twitter, and I host the Locked On Celtics podcast. And I'm Jake Madison, host of the Locked On Pelicans podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Nola Jake, where I have two-factor authentication turned on. So don't even try, scammers. Yeah, yeah. That that joke in the intro was was Jake's. What these this way? There he is. I get my bearing straight on the video. You can get this uh, show on YouTube. You can watch us. You can see I'm very clearly broadcasting live from uh, a, the uh, Barclay Center in Brooklyn, where everybody is standing still and has been for months. And uh, you can also catch the show wherever you get your podcasts. And yeah, that's a, it's a fun it's a fun time. Today's show is also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Later on, we'll talk about the embarrassment for Jimmy Buss. In the second block, we'll talk about Steph Curry. But I am in Brooklyn, quote unquote Brooklyn, because we're going to start off talking about Kevin Durant and the Jason Tatum trade rumors. The guys were talking about this on yesterday's podcast. So because it involves the Celtics and Jason Tatum, I did get a few tweets, Jake, that said, um, John, can you set people straight here about trading Jason Tatum for <laughs> Kevin Durant? And the story is that an anonymous GM said, hey, I'd trade Tatum for Kevin Durant before I trade Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart for Kevin Durant. And the guys yesterday agreed. I know what they were saying. I know what they were saying, Jake. They Their argument was, if you trade Tatum, you're not trading four guys and killing your depth. You're trading Tatum for KD. And even though it shortens your window significantly, it opens it wider next season. So you you go for the one championship where you feel like, okay, this is really the run. And you're, you're upgrading Tatum to Durant, theoretically, and you're making your run. I disagree. I, look, I get it in a vacuum, right? Like, we've seen, especially for a lot of teams, that depth is pretty important. So if you don't trade away and, like, gut half your roster to go get a guy, that can be really important. Like, look at what the Los Angeles Lakers are kind of dealing with the fallout, right, of the Anthony Davis trade and trading away Lonzo Ball, Brandon right. Ingram, all of those picks, right? They won their title, and it's been real rough ever since then and that's a big part of the problem so i understand the argument for trading for him because look you win a title that's the name of the game here that's why we're doing this and then i also understand like yeah that's maybe too much and we want to think more long term with this yeah and that's kind of where i fall but you know the, the guys yesterday made their argument i've made like i i I, did, I don't even want to touch the the thing here because it's not a legit trade it's this is like theoretical stuff and and the the direction i want to take today's show isn't necessarily would you, won't you? Because this is it, they won't. The Celtics won't. Right, it's not going to happen. We don't need to waste the airtime. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I don't think it should happen. I think you have to think more long term. And going from twenty four to thirty four, not 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 in my book. Not going to happen. Especially when the guy was just first team All NBA and has his whole career ahead of him to become something close to so a reasonable facsimile. Whatever. My argument. That's my argument. Disagree. Disagree. That's fine. My direction for today is the anonymous GM, which has become a staple of NBA reporting. And how much should we trust these guys? And how much, how should we even consume this reporting? Now, I'm a beat writer, I'm out there in the media. I'm not opposed. I've talked to scouts before. Um, it, it's, it's something that, when you when you give somebody the anonymity, they now supposedly theoretically say, "Well, I have the kind of clearance to say this is what I would do if I was running the Celtics." And you know, you're not tampering or anything like that. But my argument, Jake, and you tell me what you think about this. 
I don't trust any of these anonymous GMs at all because they all have reason to poison the well. Everybody's always trying to get a leg up on somebody. I don't know who this anonymous GM was. And I like, was, was it, it Sean Darryl Marks? Morey? I don't think so. <laughs> You know, was it Daryl Morey? Was right. it, you know, was it Pat Riley? Was it, which of Boston's competition said, yeah, oh yeah, we want to, you, he should, they should trade Jason Tatum because yeah, okay, maybe you say the Celtics, maybe you even concede the Celtics can win a championship next year with Kevin Durant. But if you take Tatum off that team and Durant hits, you know, starts to decline or gets hurt, whatever, whatever. Now the Celtics are, are now without their number one and they get derail and, this anonymous GM suddenly is like, ha, 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 there we go. Another another competitor out the window. Now we can clear our way. No, no one should listen to any of this, right? Like they're fun sound bites. And clearly I think they do this to rile things up. But if there's anything I've learned of, you know, working in this industry now for 10 plus years, right, is negotiation absolutely happens to the me through the media and people try and influence things through the media, which makes me feel really good about our jobs at times because they think we're influential and powerful in some capacity, even though we don't right. actually do anything and influence much. But this is what they're trying to do, right? Like everyone has some sort of like ulterior motive. There's like game of thronesiness to all of this, right? Where you don't really want to take anything at face value and try and kind of look at like who benefits from all of this. It's, it's the same old saying, right? Of like follow the money, right? Which I think it's thrown around a little too much, but it is to like a certain degree of this, right? Like who stands to benefit from a statement like this? And this comes on the heels of what we talked about last week or two weeks ago, where also Jalen Brown was a, seemed a little bit hurt that his name was included in trade rumors for Kevin Durant, right? He had the social media right. stuff. It clearly, to some degree, bothered him. Maybe Jason Tatum sees this and is like, what the hell, you guys? And it creates <laughs> a little bit more turmoil, even though it's not actually true, as you said. They're not going to do anything like this. There wasn't anything saying that, like, yes, he they've included him in a trade or anything like that. But, yeah, there's clearly some sort of art ulterior motive in all of this. And we see this in every sport. Like, you see this stuff that just happened in the NFL where there were shots taken at Pat Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, right? Where it was like, I don't care if they're multiple-time MVP winners. They're not good QBs. And it was like an anonymous defensive coordinator. I might have this wrong a little bit to a certain degree on what happened. But it's like... Like, why are we giving these guys time yeah, on yeah, some of this yeah. stuff? Like, oh my God, having mult a guy who's a multiple time MVP, he's a terrible player. Like, well, they're trying to do something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. I, and look, I understand the the anonymous source type of thing. Uh, we all have them. I have people that I can lean on. You have people that you can lean on that tell you things. Some of it's reportable. Some of it's not. And and you do you do have like the occasional yeah source tells me that the Celtics are going to blah 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 uh, they're going to target a center with their traded player except you know something like that. There's a time and a place for someone in an organization to be like, look, this isn't a huge deal. I'll tell you, you can report it. Just don't say it was me. Okay, fine. But. I think we take it a little too far. And this is like a self-criticism of my own industry. We just say, yeah, I'll just give everybody in the league carte blanche to say whatever the hell they want. And I'll just say anonymous, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who, who just blanket says the other way. If your name, if you're not willing to put your name on it, then don't say it. I think no, there's, there's a, a reason to, to have that stuff. Absolutely. I agree with that. Right. But this level of, it's late July, early August, September. Stuff is still kind of hanging out there. I need a way to get a fresh angle on something. So I'm going to call up my buddy in this front office. I'm going to call my buddy in that front office and say, hey, I talked to a few executives around the league. Here's what they're saying. And it just, it, it, I feel like we put ourselves, we, the media, put ourselves out in position to be used to kind of, like for these guys to play their games with one another and put each other in those positions that you just talked about. It's you no, know, you're, you're not wrong, right? Like it's, it's always been shocking to me, like how willing people are to like tell you stuff, whether it's off the record or on the record anonymously. And it's like, what's going on here. And it took me a couple of years to realize like, Oh, they're using you to a certain degree to kind of get their point across. And then we're like, well, mm -hmm. we want the story. So we're going to run with it. Like earlier in the season, I reported that Zion had fallen asleep in a film session and that he had skipped a couple of like workout rehab assignments from his knee. And like, without getting too deep into this right like the source on that one 
I'll say it with this, was with the Pelicans, right? And clearly wanted to kind of send a wake-up call to, like, Zion Williamson to a certain degree mm-hmm. by getting some, like, negative stuff out there. They need to be anonymous so that Zion doesn't walk in the building and is like, where, where the fuck is that guy? Where, where the hell is that guy? Sorry. <laughs> um, and, like, gets angry about all of that. So, like, you have that sort of stuff, right? But it's still a good story. It's also true. It happens. So you've got to, like, get it out there. So it's, it's, it's a fine, like, delicate balance on how to go about it and that's why when those beat reporters you know like you i'll throw in the mix and others and i don't consider myself a beat reporter like know the fine line of like okay i'll report this stuff and then this other stuff like they're just telling me things just to tell me things and like this isn't actually worth like writing a story about right it's like and i i don't want to dive too deep down anybody's throat because we got jobs to do we have editors we have people people that are like want this stuff too right like give me something right the whole point is to, to kind of let people a little bit behind the curtain and to say, like, we, we do have to take this. We on the other side need to be mindful consumers because we have to understand that not everything is, that is presented to us comes to us at face value. Right. When opposing anonymous GMs, you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know what their motivations are. They're saying things about the team you like, the team that you hate. You're so willing to believe certain things, and then you got to be unwilling to. You got to you you write other things off. I feel like everybody's got a motivation, and for somebody to be like, you know, off the cuff saying, "Yeah, I'd trade Jason Tatum for Kevin Durant." I mean, yeah, I can see the argument, but like, so so what if anonymous GM says I would trade a player A for player B? So what? But and then people just run with it, and I think that it's accomplishing a goal. It's like accomplishing a hey, let's just, let's let's throw Jason Tatum's let's, name let's out there. Let's screw with that team today, let's, right? Like let's every, everyone loves in that grenade. being a troll yeah. on Twitter at times and messing with people. And like these these GMs, you know, and Daryl Morey is definitely one of them at times. So I wouldn't be shocked if this was sure. him, right? Like absolutely want to get into that mix and and do this sort of stuff and see if you can kind of cause some damage. And it's wherever you can get a competitive advantage. And like this is in a weird way, like actually where you can get one, even if it seems stupid that you can get one from this yeah all right well i just leave it at that it's it's very interesting i'm fascinated by this stuff because then it gets treated of oh that's an interesting topic let's talk about this seriously and throw it out there and then fans are like well well i think this was a dumb take i think this was a great take and it does it trickles down and everything so it's a, it's just an interesting kind of uh, i don't know i i just want people to just you know just keep keep certain things in mind when this stuff comes up. All right, we'll we'll get to Steph Curry. We'll get to Steph and the Golden State Warriors and whether players can really stick around forever and ever and ever where they want to be. First, let's talk to you about Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs, including where does Kevin Durant end up? We just talked about him and Tatum. Does Tatum change teams? Does Jalen Brown change teams? He's in the rumors. Where all of that stuff, it's on betonline.net, your favorite, uh, your your number one spot for all your favorite sports, events, your number one source online for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news uh, of every league, including the NBA, obviously, Major League Baseball, which is going through its trade deadline and going nuts, uh, NFL, NHL, combat sports, boxing, MMA, all that, esports, even golf. Golf is uh, big in the news now with competing leagues. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts. They have you covered head on over to bet online today. You can use your mobile device to do so. Learn more about the action happening today. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, let's get back into things. I want to thank everybody for making locked on NBA. Your first listen every day. How about uh, check out locked on nets, locked on one of locked on Celtics, locked on, Pelicans, every team is covered, so check that out. Whichever team's in the news, whichever team you want to know more about. Uh, Jake, we're talking about the Golden State Warriors, so uh, I have to teleport my way uh, over to the Chase Center. Look at the the special effects budget we have here. Yeah, this is very – this is uh, from my media seat. You can put this aside. There we go. That was from my media seat uh, for the NBA Finals, which was really cool. Uh, I knew taking these pictures would come up, come in handy at some point. So, uh, 
Steph Curry was on uh, recently on an Oakland A's baseball broadcast, and he said he wants to stay in the Bay forever. It's the, the only team he's known. It's the only team he wants to know, even when it comes to after his playing days are over. Now, we each cover teams where, hey, there's possibility. You, you kind of want Zion to stick around forever and ever. I wouldn't mind if Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown stuck around one or both of them stuck around forever. I love Marcus Smart. You know, I'd love to see him stick around. But considering there's a big glaring change coming in the CBA, there are there's a lot of money coming into the CBA. Do we think that's going to change anything about how player movement happens? I know they, the guys talked yesterday about it, uh, about – potentially getting into the collective bargaining agreement things to prevent things like trade requests. I don't know if that's going to happen, but does all of this money help or hinder the future of players being able to stay in one city for their entire careers? It's a good question, you know, and I'm changing my mind as we're talking a little bit. You know, it, there's a couple of unknowns, but even with some of those unknowns and what the next collective bargaining agreement might look like in general, right? I'd say this probably is going to mean you see this less and less. And it's already a very, very rare thing. But I think with so much money coming into the league and at times just a league filled with cheap owners, to be perfectly honest, that's going to mean mm-hmm. things like these guys aren't going to stay there. You know, if there's a player that's past his prime and keeping him on your roster means you're going to go into the luxury tax, particularly, say, in a small market like New Orleans or a team that's never really paid it before. Are they actually going to dip into the luxury tax to kind of do right by that guy? Or are you going to have kind of a Dwayne Wade situation, right, where he left the Miami Heat for a little bit? And that seemed absolutely unthinkable for a little bit, but they kind of got cute with some of that money. And that money is going to get explosive, right? We're going to all need a recalibration on what makes sense as an NBA contract in the, you know, coming up in the near future. You know, like role players making 20 plus million, you know, fifth starters are going to be making 30 plus million dollars. Guys in their mid 30s might be getting 40 plus million dollars when you're not like a tier one guy. When the money gets that high and has such big implications in the luxury tax and things like that, and there's more money to chase elsewhere, I just don't see that end up these guys sticking around unless it's like a perfect scenario like it was with Steph, right? That he, you know, they coincided with getting good right as he kind of came in on that cheap deal that let them get good. You know, and that yeah. was a big team building advantage. If he didn't have those injuries early on in his career, he might have been making more money. Maybe they couldn't have afforded some of what they were doing because they only started spending once they started winning titles and realized how lucrative that team could be in the first place. Right. Like they started spending when they built this building. Yeah, there you go. Here, You know, that's so you, when they started spending. you look at all of that and it's like that was just such a weird like confluence of events that I just don't think you're really going to see that with so much money in the league that you could go and chase that. You can go get paycheck if a team's been underpaying you for a little while. It just means dudes are going to bolt, I think, eventually. Yeah, I think one of the things to watch for is is the luxury tax calculations that may make it a little bit more advantageous for teams to re-sign their own players. This is going to be, I think, one of the things to watch for in the upcoming CBA, because you have, I know, I know that the Warriors have come out and, and Lakeup has said it's, this is unfair. Um, The tax system right now is built, was built to break up teams. It was built to break up super teams and the, the, the repeater tax, which is, I mean, I'm not going to get into all of the numbers, but extraordinarily punitive. And yes. the 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 Warriors and the Clippers are going to be paying what 100 and, 140, 160 million dollars in taxes alone. That is, I mean, when you have the Chase Center, when you have Steve Ballmer, and they're they're building their own building, so that's going to make that's going to make it even crazier for the Clippers. They they've created a a class of their own, which was entirely. This, this, these numbers were supposed to be prohibitive. Mm-hmm. And so 
I wonder if they are going to go through and say, all right, this, this new class of owners, these super owners, for lack of a better term, building their own buildings. Now you have incentive, whereas before you have um, incentive to try to go to your local municipality and get local taxes and get all of this stuff and kind of fleece the city. Now it's like, wait a second. And they're, they're trying to do this in Philly now because they, they just announced a downtown plan for a, a building. They say, hey, if we can privately finance this thing, we can put the concerts in there. We can get all the money and use all of that money to build our own super team that we just keep paying and paying and paying and paying. Does that mean that you can keep your own guy longer? Depends on, like, I think, like, it, bring it back to the CBA thing. If, if the CBA calculation is, here's a tax tier, but if you're re-signing your own guy of, like, 10 years or more, you can sign him to the Supermax, but the tax is not in the repeater or, or taxed differently or something like that. Maybe maybe a guy like Steph has a chance, but if not, then I wonder I wonder how that tax situation is going to impact the entire league and, and impact guys being able to stay in one place or not. No, that's that's a big part of it, right? That's why I kind of said in the beginning, there's an unknown to this until we know that it's kind of tough to make a dis- determination on this. The other thing to think about with it is too, like if if these guys want to stay there and if the team wants to keep them, that team usually needs to be good for an extended period of time, right? Like like look what's yeah. happening in Utah with Donovan Mitchell, who we've talked about on the show too, right? Like he's not, he, he it sounds like he wants to leave, but let's say he wanted to stay, right? Like they're looking to actively move him because they're going through a rebuild. And you're only going to move that guy if you're not good and you're going through a rebuild, which most teams hit at some point or another, which also means dudes are going to get moved whether they want to or not. So, you know, imagine if at that point, you know, with Steph in his ankles and it wasn't working out and they hadn't started winning titles, you know, they just were like, okay, we got to do a rebuild and we got to trade him. You don't even get this opportunity because that's kind of how the league operates with teardowns and things like that, right? And I think that's something yeah. to also keep in mind too. Yeah, the tax plays a part, but if the team's just not good, at a certain point, it feels like they blow it up. This is what we've been saying should happen in Washington with Bradley Beal, right? He's been a one-team guy right. his whole career, and we keep saying they should trade him. And maybe one day they will realize they're not going anywhere and you don't want to live in that middle ground of the NBA whatsoever for too long, maybe a year or so. But you don't want to be repeatedly every single year a play-in tournament team, right? Look look at the San Antonio Spurs just trading away DeJounte Murray, right? They were a play-in tournament team, but they weren't an NBA title right. team. They weren't really a playoff team. So they're like, screw it, let's just get a, a head start on the rebuild and you boot a guy out the door in a sense too. Like that's a factor in it that... This isn't, you know, the Indiana Pacers really were only the only team that was kind of content being the seventh or eighth seed and getting bounced out in the first round and never truly going through a rebuild like they probably should have done. Yeah, the rebuild thing is a real, that's the real interesting spot because at some point the Warriors will age out. Right. And what do you do then? What do you do then? And you can do what Danny Ainge did in Boston when Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen aged out, Paul Pierce was one of those guys. Yeah. He, and he had a great arc with the Celtics, you know, a falling out, uh, a near trade, a reconciliation, a trade to build around him, a championship, a finals MVP. That's a guy who went through it all and should have stayed with the Celtics and should have finished his career there. Instead, we have him coming back with the Clippers and having a, you know, his last shot, his last make in Boston being a meaningless three pointer for the Clippers in a blowout over Isaiah Thomas. And that that's what blew the roof off the joint. Does it does it change anything? No, his legacy is secure. He's a Celtic for life. Would it change anything other than our own kind of like eyes burning out of our head if Steph Curry is like running up the floor for the Charlotte Hornets going back. I mean, great story going back a, to play a, where his dad was. That was a good team to pick yeah. for that, like kind of like where you don't feel as awful about it, but it changes things. Right. Like, it You're is like, cool wow. to see a dude who played his whole career with the team. There's like, I, I won't disagree with that at all, right? Like, there's absolutely something special to that, even if their legacy is not actually impacted. Yeah. And the, like, the Warriors are an interesting case, too, because you've got Draymond. Should Draymond finish his career there? Should Clay finish his career there? If all three finish their career there, then you're just going to go eventually into the tank, unless they all retire at the same time when they've got 
some basketball left. So they are an interesting case for all of this. Uh, all right, let's let's leave that there. I can keep talking about this forever. But when we come back, something that Jeannie Buss probably doesn't want us to talk about. It's our real or fake segment, and it has to do with an embarrassing Twitter hack. Uh, it, I'm going to come back after I buy myself a PlayStation, Jake. Hold on. i got to just hop on Twitter. <laughs> All right, let's get uh, let's get to it. And since we are talking about Genie Bus, I know I've got to go from the Chase Center. Let me see here. I know I've got a, I got the Staples Center button. There we go. There we go. Now I'm at the Staples Center where the Lakers Is are that on also the floor. Media seat? On. That's uh, that's also a media seat. That's also the view. People on the YouTube only just pull away there. That's that's the media seat and the Staples Center where I. Had, there are a few different uh, spots there. This is from a couple of seasons ago, I believe. I like to take a picture from everywhere I go because now I didn't I didn't anticipate using it for virtual background, <laughs> but uh, it is is pretty cool to take these pictures from all these arenas. There are a few arenas that I don't have, but uh, you know, hopefully at some point uh, I'll complete my collection. So Jeannie Bus, her Twitter was hacked. Uh, as you joked at the beginning, as I joked, stealing your joke. Uh, how does Genie Bus not have two factor authentication at this point? How how are people still getting hacked on Twitter? And uh, <laughs> please, 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 some some white hat hacker, don't take this as a challenge. To I do have two factor authentication, but I'm sure that's breachable as well somehow. So uh, real or fake? The question is, Jake is is does it get any more embarrassing? It gets no more embarrassing. Real or fake? It gets no more embarrassing for team owner. Than to have your Twitter hacked so somebody can sell PlayStation 5s and scam people. So I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go it's actually real, but for Genie Bus. Maybe for a different owner it wouldn't be. For Genie Bus, though, I actually think this is probably about like as bad of a not as bad of a look as it could be. There's certainly worse things, right? But if we're talking like harmless stuff, this is pretty damn embarrassing, partially because you've got to look at all of the factors around the Los Angeles Lakers, right? You know, mm -hmm. we always call them. They're mom and pop, despite being the most popular team in the league and raking in money. They act cheap, right? Like Alex Caruso being let go for over kind of cost yeah, reasons, exactly. things like that. They they keep bringing the Rambi back because they probably don't really want to invest in the front office like they could. That's the most embarrassing thing the Lakers <laughs> That's do. That's the one. Uh, so here's what makes this so funny to me is that they applied for a COVID PPP loan to play, pay their employees, right? Which makes them just look yeah, broke yeah, yeah. and cheap, right? And so knowing yep. all of that, I don't know, maybe Jeannie Buss is just selling some things from her home in like a garage <laughs> sale to just try and like fund the Lakers. That's like the headcanon I've made from this, that it wasn't actually a hacker. It's just, oh man, we're almost out of money. We need to appease LeBron James somehow. We got to keep things going. So I just need to sell a couple of things. And like, yeah, I could conceivably see her having like 10 PS5s given to her by Sony as like the owner of the Lakers or something like that. And so she's so desperate that she's selling them. And if it wasn't the Lakers, they weren't run like a mom and pop. I'd just be like, oh, whatever. They got hacked. Yeah. Put on two factor authentication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be dumb here. This it's just like, OK, cool. I'm running with this story in my mind I and like I'm it. just laughing so hard at it. I like the bit. I like the bit. So she's on like Facebook Marketplace. Yes, exactly. Selling off like <laughs> Shri Mikhailuk game worn jerseys yeah. uh, or whatever. Like, like what's she, deep in the closet there or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. She's, is there, is there like who, like obscure Lakers, like Travis Knight, Travis Knight game worn sneakers. Here's like 25 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, what do you got? Like a Phil Jackson, an old Phil Jackson cigar. You know, oh, that's like just getting like when you get rid of your ex's stuff, right? And it's like, screw yeah, this, like, like put she, it I'm out, sure like take this. Stuff behind. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like one of their favorite items and you sell it for cheap just to like spite them and be like, oh no, I got rid of that thing for five bucks, that jacket you loved, like screw you. I think, I think the answer is actually like real only because it's, again, I'm going to go with the only because it's Los Angeles. Yeah. But for a different reason, because everything in LA is fake. And about appearances. So the greatest indignant indignance you can suffer in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, in La La Land is the quote unquote bad look. You know, there's you can in Hollywood get arrested. You can go to jail. You can recover from that. 
But if you have, if there's a bad look, oh my God, forget it. So then you're on TMZ. Then you're on all this other. That's that's where I think that like the fact that the Hollywood priorities are so out of whack, I think that makes this real. Because in reality, no, of course, there's many, many more embarrassing things that could happen. But because it's LA and LA, it's all about appearances. This is a bad look. So therefore, this is a horrible, horrible scandal. I, I- I'm, I kind of agree with you, right? Like I'm from LA here, so I'm not gonna like savage the city like you just did here. But you know, like it's it's kind of about like, look, you try and act like you're richer than you are there a lot of the time, right? And so when yeah. you're like, when you're trying to scam money for PS5s, it's like, wait, wait a second here, like, oh, maybe they don't have as much money as should they be at the country club with us, right? Like that sort of kind of right. kind of thing. Like right. I said, any other team, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. Owner's dumb. It's a dumb rich person. Like that's fine. Like they don't do two factor authentication. They probably don't even run their Twitter account. And this one, it's just like, come on. The best was the Lakers having to put out a tweet from the official Lakers account being like, please don't DM Jeannie Buss your information because her Twitter account <laughs> is hacked. We'll let you know when it's like back to normal. So you have like the indignity of like the other account with way more followers, right? That people are going to see more of being like, oh, by the way, our owner got hacked and scammed and like, don't fall for this. It's just like if it was any other team, yeah. it'd be fine but the lakers are are really yeah, funny yeah. but before we wrap up though do you have any truly like embarrassing nba and a truly embarrassing nba basketball story like you personally because i have one nba basketball like mm, have you ever done no, something on- like covering a game where you're just like oh my god like you asked a dumb question and maybe you haven't maybe you're just a really good beat repi- uh, beat reporter where you don't do that i mean <laughs> come on come on look come on um, I, I mean, I've had, I've had a couple of like, re, like, uh, players come back at me with a couple of things, but I, I can't remember anything at the NBA level covering a, a, a game where I, I flubbed anything. I didn't, I, okay. I, I will, I will. I'm putting you on the spot. I, so if you, and also if you yeah. don't want to share. <laughs> no, no, no. But my, my, the, the closest I got was, um, it's not embarrassing, but man, man, I don't know. Uh, I was at the NBA finals uh, in, uh, no, I'm sorry. I was in Milwaukee. I was in Milwaukee covering Celtics bucks. And I was going to do a TV hit with a, a, a TV station. And I thought they were set up outside in the deer district. And they were two minutes away from uh, going live and I'm outside, I'm texting with the producers. I'm like, where are you guys? And it's like, I see Duke out on the court. I'm like, oh crap, you're on the court? I'm outside. So I run in, I get to the closest entrance. I go in, I go through security. It ends up being the employee entrance. I don't have my credential. They're like, yeah, you got to go like down the hall, around the corner. I get a text from the reporter. And he's like, uh, going live in 30 seconds. I'm like, okay. I start to walk towards, so you walk down this way. And you go left for the credential and right for the court. And I was like, do, 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 bam, to the right without my credential. And you know, like if you don't, if you go through pass through security to get to the court without a credential, everybody's like high alert, like, like a terrorist just walked in. I get out there. I grab the microphone. Security is like, sir, sir, sir. <laughs> and on TV, you see me going, I'm just going to be a couple minutes. And I turn around. And I'm doing my TV thing. Luckily, security was like, uh, all right. Clearly, if he's holding a mic, he's TV. probably fine and like should be right. doing this. But so I like slid into the camera shot. And I'm like, hold on. Hi. So, yes, Celtics and the Bucks, game three or whatever. So <laughs> that, that's my like most obvious like NBA kind of like, I call it embarrassing. More like, I don't know, a, a weird moment. Closest I, I can get for you. I had, it's fine. I had one in 2017. It was like a month before the season started. So it was still during football season. And it was like on like a Tuesday or it was on a, on a Monday, the Pelicans were doing a media game and we we're going to get to play on the court in the Smoothie King Center. We, they were like, come on over. It's going to be red versus white. We have jerseys for you guys. You'll get to like change in the locker rooms and do all this like really cool experience. Like we're going to announce yeah, you cool. guys like going in. Our names are on the scoreboard, like keeping track of like who's doing well. Wow. It was set for yeah really cool thing they did 2 p.m on a monday so i went to a bar to watch the saints game the day before and the bar we were at 
was doing it where you got a shot anytime the Saints scored and they were playing the Lions and they ended up scoring 56 points, and like three defensive touchdowns in this one. I, I remember going home at like 10 p.m. and then waking up around like noon the next day to like get, <laughs> get ready and like change and like go to this thing. I don't even get a chance to like shower. I'm an absolute mess from the Saints game that basically just – I don't remember anything for, for the most part on like Sunday. <laughs> so we get there and they're like, Jake, you're starting. And I was like, can't, can't, can't do that. And they made, us, <laughs> they made us sign waivers before we played. So like during the game, the, 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 the social media team is like taking like pictures and stuff. There's a bunch of photos of me just in the background, like puking into a trash can. And there's some like video <laughs> <laughs> of like the game going on. And then if you really look in the bathroom, I'm just sitting on the bench, like throwing up the whole time. I, I got into the game for all of like 10 That's minutes. Amazing. I got real disoriented on where I was, started going the wrong way down the court. Like after uh, one of my teammates grabbed a rematch, I was like an absolute mess. And it was like, great. I get this really cool once in a lifetime opportunity. And instead of scoring any points, I was throwing up. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> that is, that is, that is a truly embarrassing story. They have not done the media game since. And I don't know if it beca- they were like so worried about like what we were going to do after the fact. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I really guys, hope that wasn't because of me. Guys, should we do the media game again? I don't know. We almost killed Jake. <laughs> I mean, we might we might not want to do that again. It's, you know, who, who had to clean that up the last time? Oh, I you came know, into like, like a bigger trash can. I was like, not going to make people do that. I'm at least going to be polite about this, but people are laughing at me. Oh man, it was mess. The, 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 I mean, you have to search for it, but they're probably still on social media somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it's New Orleans. People throwing up in trash cans is pretty it's like a normal thing. It just happens. I mean, it happened in the Smoothie King Center instead of Bourbon Street. At least, at least it went into the trash can. But at least I have two factor authentication on my Twitter account. <laughs> All right. Well, embarrassments galore here. Uh, I was going to tell you about the time I went two for 12 in a tournament game in, uh, in college, uh, but two for 12 from the line. Oh, yeah, that was a bad game. Uh, I, I was, uh, I had a great game. Otherwise it was like 26 points, 14 rebounds. And I was two of 10 from the free throw line. Couldn't hit a thing from the free throw line. <laughs> and we ended up like losing by four. I was devastated. Oh devastated. No, yeah. That's pretty awful. Yeah. That was pretty old. That's my most embarrassing basketball moment. So there's that. Throw that out there. And that that game actually meant something. So, all right. On that note, <laughs> uh, we'll wrap up the show on Wednesdays here on the Lockdown NBA Podcast. I'm John Corrales, one of your co-hosts. Under, John underscore Corrales on Twitter, host of the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. And I'm Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and the host of the Lockdown Pelicans Podcast. All right, that's it. We'll see you next week on Wednesday. Make sure you're subscribed. Get every day directly to your device. Watch the show on YouTube. And then share the podcast as well. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Locked On NBA podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network.